How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates, and we are back again a little late. It's been a hell of a weekend, and it's the start of a very long week for us, so we apologize profusely. I'm McKay. <laughs> I'm Jordan. Sorry, I uh, got a little ahead of myself. Um, so hopefully everybody's weekend has gone well. We've done a lot of traveling, a lot of social interaction, and it has been quite exhausting. So... We're just looking for a little bit of brevity or craziness or anything, so uh, hopefully today will be good. Before we get to anything, oh, do you hear that, Joe? What? It sounds like it's Ex Mormon News Hour with your anchors, McKay. And Jordan. And Jordan, and we have a little update. Um, a little while ago, um, back in January, we did a video talking about the relationship that the Mormon Church and BYU have with people in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, a little bit of an update with that. Um, we were seeing that they were kind of making it hard for people to do a repeat of last year's rainbow Y lighting. Um, they had said that people aren't allowed to go up to the Y at night since they own the trail. They installed a sign. On the anniversary of that, on March 4th, they installed a sign. I don't think we had discussed it because it hadn't done that yet. They installed a sign in like a little barrier. It's like that plastic fencing, orange fencing. I'll throw a, a picture up. To prevent people from going up and doing it. So we thought that that was the end of the Y, light the Y demonstrations. But oh ye of little faith. Uh, when people organize, they pull through. And there was a, another lighting of the Y this past Saturday, the 19th. And they did it again. Despite there being potential legal repercussions, they went up, lit the flag, uh, or the, the rainbow flag on the Y. They also did a trans pride variation of the Y, which is pretty awesome. They did not do that last time, so that's new. They didn't. That's new. So now we have the three flavors of the Y. We have new trans pride classic rainbow pride and original racist so there you go it was awesome everybody went up and came down even though there were police officers waiting for people at the bottom nobody was arrested or charged with anything so surprising yeah. love wins we love it maybe they were desperate to avoid another pr nightmare this time one will never know one will never know, but yeah, we love to hear it. If you'd like to know a little bit more about this, uh, Latter Gay Stories on Facebook, I will throw links in the description, or here on YouTube, Mormon Stories, they did a little live stream of it, so it wasn't like people were not in the know. Um, I just kind of peeked at it. I didn't have time to watch it because it was a little long, but they had um, some media that was thrown together about history of the church with LGBTQ plus people. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. It's pretty cool. But Color of the Campus is the one, the group is responsible for doing it. Yep. Um, Those are the pictures I will use when I throw some pictures of the, the So we want to make sure that screen. we credit them for doing that. Um, they're, yeah, this is their thing. I'm sure they have support from latter Gay Stories or maybe latter Gay Stories is a huge supporter. I don't know, but give credit where credit is due. You can follow Color of the Campus on Instagram. Yeah, hiking up to the Y is no no small thing, and doing it in the dark and cold, that's extra cool. All right, let's move on to today's topic. Um, Jordan, what do you have for us today? So today we are going to be talking about prophets, apostles. Pro oh, not the money prophets. No. Oh, okay, well, the kind, kind that, of. Kind of. The kind that are seers. Yes. That receive revelations. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. So we're going to be talking about prophets and apostles and the things that they say. So because we've had such a shit week, we wanted, like McKay said, to provide some humor. So I went and found some horrendous quotes <laughs> from from church leadership, which was not difficult to do. And so I have compiled <laughs> a list for you and we are going to review them 
and share them with you. And this likely could probably become a series because I could not reduce this to one video. There were so many that I wanted to include that I couldn't. And so this will probably be a multi-part series. So I know we could probably do this all the time on TikTok if we really wanted if to. If we really but. wanted to. A small point, these are funny in a sense because they're cringe and they're terrible. Um, and like off the wall they kind are. of stuff. A lot of them are science related and really bizarre, but there are some in here that are racist. There are some in here that are sexist. There are some in here um, that are homophobic. So keep that in mind. We're not trying to make light of those situations because it's serious. We are more trying to draw attention to the fact that these are the things that prophets say in as serious as they can possibly be. Um, but it is also completely off the wall and crazy unhinged. So we're not trying to make light of those situations. We're just trying to give you some brevity and some different content that we've done in a minute. Yeah. To kick this off, I figured I'd come across this clip this weekend, figured it was probably really relevant to the conversation at hand. So here are the words of famed LDS author and former roommate of Wendy Nelson, the current second celestial wife of Mormon prophet Russell M. Nelson. So she's besties of the prophet's wife. Yeah. Sherry Dew. She is huge in the LDS world. And I think she is she's the single. CEO of Deseret Book, if I'm not she's mistaken. way up there. Yeah. But she is a single woman and she is older. And being a single woman and being older in the church is like she's never been married. She's not a widow. And it's very unheard of um, within Mormonism. And to be in a leadership position and not be married, it, it's, it's wild. It's well, wild. She's a woman, so leadership positions are pretty thinly veiled as being nothing. Um, anyway, let's see what Sherry Dew has to say about her good friend's husband and people like him in the past. Some people get tangled up in the question, but are prophets, seers, and revelators infallible? I think that's the wrong question. A better one is, who exactly are prophets? They are the ordained holders of priesthood keys that authorize the Lord's power to be distributed throughout the earth. They may not be perfect. They are, after all, still human. But they are the most perfect, inspired, unflawed leaders on earth. That by no means represents everybody's opinion when it comes to prophets and leadership of the church. But this is a very influential woman in Mormon culture. So a lot of people take that to be church. Anyway, that was just a little preface to what we are going to talk about now. And that's important because within oh. the church, here's the dynamic that happens. You just brought this up and this is, it just linked in my brain. It just... Just went to the top of your brainium. Came to the top of my brainium. Okay. So what <laughs> what she just said is the whole um, the Mormon Church constantly says that prophets make mistakes. Um, they aren't infallible. They make errors. They say things sometimes that aren't literally God's word spewing out of their mouth, right? And so the Mormon Church says that. And so, but at the same time, they say things like they're unflawed. Yeah. And they're not infallible, but they're the most infallible leaders of the world. Like, yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> they do talk to Jesus quite often, remember? That really sounds like she was just trying to meet the word count on an essay. And <laughs> they just try to confuse you and they take you in little loops and then you're like, and oh, reframe questions in the same in a different way, but it's the same question. So, so what we're going to share with you today is quotes from prophets, church leaders, apostles, etc. And the interesting thing about this is the church, these are recorded. These are documented. I'm not pulling these out of my butt. These are actual things. They come from, you know, books, scripture, journal of discourses, you know, teachings of the prophets, speeches, speeches, general conference addresses, talks, like there's a million different things, journals, diaries, like all these things, right? So all these are documented. I can provide sources for them if needed. But the point is some of these are older and a lot of these prophets are dead now. Um, some of them are long dead, like Brigham Young we're going to talk about today. And what they will say, what church leaders will say is they were talking as a man. 
not as a profit. They were products of their time. So that's the distinction that is made, and that's how they excuse past racist, homophobic comments made by previous leaders is by saying, well, he wasn't speaking as a prophet at that time. That time he was he was struggling, so he was speaking as a man. And that's how we kind of explain away the absolute insanity and harmfulness of the things that have been said. Let's get into it. Sorry for the lengthy intro. Let's, uh, let's get on with it, as they would say. I want to add, um, some of this stuff comes from a website that is a fabulous, fabulous source of knowledge when it comes to the blunders of LDS leadership. Mistinsundayschool.com. They, they also have do an Instagram. Amazing graphics, cited sources in context of everything that they put out there. Excellent. Anyway, let's go. So first one, this is from this is from 1980. It was in the church magazine at the time. First presidency message. This is Marion G. Romney. And he says tithing. Marion G. Romney. Yes. Related to that Romney. Yes. Mitt. Good old Mitt. Tithing, paying 10% of your income to the church, right? Tithing is not a free will offering. It is a debt, a payment of which brings great blessings. And that sounds kind of nice. The payment of tithing is also worthwhile as fire insurance. Fire insurance. <laughs> now, now, what kind of fire might we be discussing, Jordan? The fiery pits of hell. Oh, that kind of fire insurance. See, when I was a first, uh, a little, when we were baby ex-Mormons last year, people were talking about fire insurance. And I was like, well, yeah, that's just, you know, homeowner's insurance is really important because if a disaster happens, you want to be able to recoup your losses. And uh, yeah, it was quite a while before I realized it's not that kind of insurance. It's making sure you stay out of hell kind of insurance. So not quite as nice as one would think. Yeah, a bit of a swing and a miss, if you'd ask me. Next, this is from David O. McKay. Okay, a preface uh, related to one of the previous episodes. Uh, the listeners will not have known, but we were talking about the Salt Lake City Cemetery and the large monuments constructed to LDS Mormon leadership that were buried there. One of the images I showed was of the headstone for David O. McKay. No relation to me, although commenter, serial commenter and LDS aficionado, John D. Lee in the comments, you might know who I'm talking about, said that if I could prove any relation to David O. McKay, he would submit his resignation. So I am looking very hard for a relation to David O. McKay so that he will finally just give up the ghost and leave everybody alone. So take it away, Jordan. Sorry about the. No, we were going to get questions about that. Yeah. We always get questions if he's related. <laughs> um, so this was in the Young Women's Journal. So Young Women's is girls under the age of 18. Okay. This is who this is being broadcasted to. This is coming from the prophet. This is in 1906. Throwing it back a little bit. Girls, the flower by the roadside that catches the dust of every traveler is not the one to be admired and is seldom, if ever, plucked, but the one blooming away up on the hillside protected by a perpendicular cliff is the flower with the virgin perfume, the one oh. the boy will almost risk his life to possess. Now, if, if we could just take a second and analyze that, what would the virgin perfume smell like, do you think? Is it like honey? Is it like... What gets me in this one is how he specified that it's a perpendicular cliff. <laughs> like it couldn't be just a My cliff. Guy. <laughs> I don't know how else you're going to define a cliff. I'm pretty sure the, uh, the perpendicularity of the edge is what makes it a cliff, my guy. But thank you for the... Uh, the specification. There. It's a unique one because we've talked about this when we really first started our channel. We've talked a lot about purity culture. Yeah. Symbolism. I'll put a link up for this one too. If you haven't seen that one, it is, uh, it feels like it was 
a while ago. Long time ago. But there, within the church, there's a lot of metaphors like this that they taught to young women. Like, there's the licked cupcake. There's the cockroach and the ice cream. Chewed gum. Chewed gum. Like, all represent, like, all a representation of the fact of if a woman does not wait to have sex until marriage, that she is worthless, you know. She's the dusty flower down by the road. Yeah. So... Really awesome things to be telling girls about their self-esteem. Seriously. I really hope this guy, he he looks like a glove got caught in the lawnmower. So I don't know what he's talking about. I will I will degrade to um, using his looks against him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. This is Apostle Erastus Snow. This was an address that he gave um, in Salt Lake in October of 1857. So now we're flying even further back in time. Whoa. And he says, no woman, no woman will get into the celestial kingdom, VIP heaven, except her husband receives her. If she is worthy to have a husband, and if not, somebody will receive her as a servant. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, all right. Um, that's awesome. interesting. Okay. Okay, and that kind of goes along with uh, the idea that people who aren't sealed are going to be ministering angels, so you get to be a servant for the rest of all eternity just because you didn't end up finding someone who is compatible with your personality and your interests and things. Basically, you're only worthy if you're married to a man or if you're a mother. Yep. That's it. That's the rub in the church. So, yeah, all women are going to be servants to someone else if they don't get married. Awesome. that's fun. Cool. So I guess that means Sherry is going to be a servant to somebody else. Probably because she's She'll probably She'll be a not servant get... to Rusty. Yeah. See, and then the thing that they do with shit like this is they will go back and be like, well, there's a lot of things that are yet to be revealed and we can't ever be sure. There will be an opportunity for everybody who is righteous during the millennium after you've been resurrected to be sealed if you haven't yet gotten the chance. Like... They try to explain they it take away. The, the, their goalposts are in buckets of sand so they can just move them whenever they want. It's true. It's fun. Okay, this one comes from Joseph Smith. It is one of the my favorites. The main man. The founder of the Mormon church. This is one of my absolute favorites. This comes from a journal of somebody who knew him at the time and was part of the church at the time. And this has been corroborated by multiple reports multiple people including joseph smith's father his own father and this is one of my absolute favorite joseph smith stories i don't think you're ready for this so hold on to your butts this is what joseph smith taught people at the time inhabitants of the moon this may be familiar to some of you if you've seen our tiktok inhabitants of the moon are more of a uniform size than the inhabitants of the earth being about six feet in height. They dress very much like the Quaker style and are quite general in style or the fashion of dress. They live to be very old, coming generally near a thousand years. This is the description of them as given by Joseph the seer, and he could see whatever he asked the father in the name of Jesus to see. And no, we are not just pulling this out of our asses. There is a manual of somebody who received their Mormon fortune telling, their patriarchal blessing from Joseph Smith's father, who was a patriarch, that said that their mission would be to the inhabitants of the moon. Yeah, there was something there that I remembered that he told somebody. So basically... So this isn't just something that we're just like, oh, we're, we hate Joseph Smith. That so guy sucks. what the hell? Church headquarters isn't yeah. sending people to... Isn't hooking up with NASA to send missionaries to the moon know, to preach seriously. to the Quaker people up there. I'm surprised Neil Armstrong didn't catch a, a glimpse of a moon man. I a mean, moon you, missionary. Couldn't, you couldn't miss them, <laughs> honestly. Apparently, they're they're about as tall as me. So I feel like so, they would stick out like a sore thumb on a ball that has no vegetation or anything really that's of note. <laughs> Love it so much. Love it. Joseph love it, love Smith, it. the man, the myth, the Mason. Nice. There was also something we could do a whole episode on that, to be honest. But I remember there was a something else that we read where one of the other prophets or apostles had stated that there wasn't like planets outside of the earth or something. 
and was I don't know if that's a Mormon thing. Was it not? I'm I don't pretty know. sure it was. I can find it. There was just unhinged flat earth people. Okay. Ezra Taft Benson. He is a uh, special one. Ezra Taft. I just want to give you guys a little uh, information on Ezra Taft Benson. Uh, just right off the bat. Ezra Taft, Taft Benson was the 15th United States Secretary of Agriculture for both presidential terms of Dwight D. Eisenhower. So he was really uh, big into politics and a staunch anti-communist. Like this guy's whole shit was during the Red Scare. So and we'll get back to that in a moment. Yeah, just a, a little preface for you. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, this is one of my other favorite favorite quotes of his. This was in 1969 and during a general conference talk. He said, the world teaches birth control. Tragically, many of our sisters subscribe to its pills and practices when they can. Can you get a subscription of birth control? I think they do wow. that now. I think you can like order it definitely online. not in 1969 so he was full of shit he, then there was a, that's his revelation <laughs> subscription birth control you get it in the mail Damn. his revelation was just early wow that was wild tragically many of our sisters subscribed to its pills and practices when they could easily provide earthly tabernacles for more of our father's children oh my god <laughs> then you guys ask us why do mormons have so many kids yeah maybe That's ezra why. taft benson should have kept his trap shut <laughs> this is the messaging and there were there are plenty of other quotes like that there was even one that i read from a different prophet that said women should not be thinking that they need to stop after four kids like it's a it's all in the same vein this messaging got repeated and repeated and repeated to women yeah. for you know hundreds of years Decades. within the mormon church so so that's a fun Ezra Taft Benson quote. Is this a twofer? This is a twofer. So this here's... is the one that I specifically requested that Jordan find because <laughs> it is one of the most offensive ones, in my opinion. So this is in 1967. There is no doubt that the so-called civil rights movement as it exists today is used as a communist program for revolution in America, just as agrarian reform was used by the communists to take over China and Cuba. Wow. This was in 1967, you said? Yes. And I believe the Civil Rights Act was signed in in 1969. I just want to make a point right here, right? This guy, a prophet, seer, and revelator, was behind the times in 1967 about the, about the civil rights movement. Mormons love... They love, 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 love to talk about how ahead of the times Joseph Smith was when he advised Mormons to not smoke tobacco. They're like, oh, he was like 150, like 100 years ahead of the curve. And this guy wasn't even two years ahead of the curve. Like, oh. They also make crazy predictions. Joseph Smith had a bunch of revelations about what would happen during the Civil War that were completely and wholly inaccurate and he like predicted the whole thing he said how it was going to start how it was going to end and basically everything well, was correct he said it in vague enough terms that we won't get into it but that's a story for vague enough day. terms that people are like oh it was right but Maybe it was, he was common right knowledge it. of things at that time that the civil war was going to be starting in south carolina anyhow sad sad for him sad Okay, this is one more recently. This is from Jeffrey R. Holland. Um, he's the guy that we made a video about a little bit ago when he talked about bringing muskets to defend the nuclear family and same, you know, and the ideas traditional of the, marriage. Yeah, the, the family, a proclamation to the world. He's really cute. So he said this in 2019. And if you're in Gen Z, get ready because he's about to he's about to slam it. Slam it to you. They, Generation Z, tend to support gay marriage and transgender rights as part of everyday life. Hell yeah, we do. First of all, that's as part of everyday life. Like It is the reality of life that's for a, a lot of people. such a weird way to say that. It would be rare for a Z. Did he really say that? Yes. It would be that. rare for a Z to not have a close friend from the LGBT community. Because of this sociability, the thin line between friendship and condoning behavior begins to blur and to be difficult to draw. 
So this was a church education system training broadcast. And so CES is responsible for training seminary teachers, Sunday school, Ellers Quorum, like all the church leaders that yeah. teach other people. They do trainings on teaching them so that they can yeah. send out the same information. And so he's teaching this to other leaders. And it, it's worth noting that seminary teachers, seminary for Mormons is a daily class that you take. If and here in Utah, they can take it during their normal school block hours. Yeah. For people like me, it was, and Jordan, but she didn't go. I didn't go, that was bad. For people like me, it was before school, every single day for an hour from ninth grade to 12th grade. So this is the kind of training that they're offering to people who are going to be instructing children. So that's not great. Also, the fact that he said zeers. That's embarrassing. This It's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for you, Jeff. Jeff come on, dog. Um, but this is a common thing within Mormonism, too, is we can be friends with gay people and we can say we love gay people, but we can't condone gay people's behavior. We can't condone somebody transitioning to be more comfortable in their own skin. We can't. Or living their life as they want yeah. to and feel like they are. Well, and he's not even going to say what Jeff. the line is. Is the line blurred when you start using somebody's pronouns correctly? Well, apparently some of them can do that, but some of them can't. Yeah. It's a whole thing. So that's a recent quote from you from Piece of Shit, Jeffrey R. Holland, which yeah. I used to really like him, by the way. And it was very disappointing for me to realize to how much of a piece of shit he was. Biggest fan, but this is now a Jeffrey R. Holland hate channel. Boo. Boo. Okay. This is Joseph Smith getting back to the man of the hour, the founder of the church. This is a beautiful quote from him that is offensive to people across the board. And if you tell this to Mormons, they will most likely, if they're not aware, they'll be like, no, he would never say that. Because one of the most common things that we get is why do people worship Joseph Smith? And that's a really commonly held belief for people outside the church, because it seems for outsiders, it looks like they put Jesus up there, like Joseph Smith up there with Jesus, like they're on the same level. But the church combats this very intensely, very frequently saying yep. that Jesus is above everybody else. The apostles are below Jesus, like whatever, whatever. But then Joseph Smith says things like this. I have more to boast of than any man ever had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. A large majority of the whole have stood by me. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. Did you hear that? Did you hear what I just said? Yikes. Jesus never did it. I boast that no man ever did such a work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints never ran away from me yet. Actually, they kind of did when you were burning down buildings and shit, but that's, that's, a, day, that's yeah. a topic for another day. But that's the kind of thing that makes people go, why the hell do you people worship Joseph Smith? And this is literally an example of Joseph going, I'm better than Jesus. Like Jesus' followers couldn't even follow Jesus. What the hell? Yeah, seriously, it is unreal. And I will take a moment to apologize to someone who I may have misled. Because at the time of explaining that Mormons don't worship Joseph Smith, he wasn't that great. I cited a scripture that I knew of before I knew of this quote that jo Jordan said. The passage that I am familiar with is in Doctrine and Covenants, section 135, verse 3, which says, Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more, save Jesus only, for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that has ever lived in it. So that was what I quoted and said, no, it's not really like that. And for the general public of the Mormon church, that is generally the case. They all know this scripture. This quote of Joseph Smith's self-aggrandizement uh, has been swept down the memory hole. I did not. I was not even aware of this quote until probably, I think it was two weeks ago, and I was like, "Did have you read this before? And Jordan was totally like perplexed that I hadn't yeah. ever seen it yet. Yeah. So that was a little uh, rage-inducing. There's a little indication for how old Joe felt about himself. This is a funny one. I don't think 
I think we've talked about this on our TikTok, maybe a brief time or two, but this is going to be a little bit mind blowing for those of you who haven't heard this is the Mormon church had determined where the Garden of Eden was. Okay. Oh, yeah. And they believe it's in the United States. Okay. Interesting. Right. So more more than just that. <laughs> I'm going to read this to you. This quote comes from Prophet Brigham Young, who took over after Joseph Smith. Um, this is from his journal, and it's from 1857. And he says, this is addressed to somebody else. You have both been to Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Zion and seen both. I have not seen either, for I have never been in Jackson County. Now it is a pleasant thing to think of and to know where the Garden of Eden was. Did you ever think of it? I do not think many do, for in Jackson County was the Garden of Eden. Joseph has declared this, and I am as much bound to believe that as to believe that Joseph was a prophet of God. So basically that means nothing to the rest of us. But Brigham Young was a very, very firm believer that the Garden of Eden is in Jackson County, Missouri. And we've had a person or two that lives in Missouri comment and be like, why are all these Mormons moving to Jackson County? That's why. They literally believe that the new Jerusalem will be constructed in Jackson County, yes. Missouri, yes. United States. Yeah, That's the, like an end of times. Yeah. There's a name to the place that they believe that the Garden of Eden was at. It is called Adam on Diamond. And there is so much like tall tale bullshit that surrounds this of people being like, oh my God, I know that the first presidency of the church went out there and they were like excavating for stones that were in the earth that allegedly adam preached to his children like oh my god this i was is so far-fetched there's so much shit about this i was told by one of our family members i think you'll know who i'm talking about one of our family yeah. members told us that they were um digging out um and pouring concrete concrete pads for houses, presumably, and then covering them back up with dirt in a preparation for something. And so oh is, my God. <laughs> this is the kind of craziness oh, oh that you God. hear about with, <laughs> with stuff in Jackson County. And they that's what they literally believe, that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to Jackson County. So people, Mormons especially, especially as more end-of-times prophecies become fulfilled, they believe more of them are like, let's go to where the magic is going to happen. Let's yeah. straight up go to... Let's go there early so we can get a jump on building Zion. Yep. Well, isn't there a church history site there? Don't they have it like roped off? That, yeah, it's like a whole valley. Uh, I was going... We were going to go there when we went on a trip out Shocker. to Missouri. But it was snowing and it was just a fucking mud pit at the time. So people were like, eh, maybe don't go there because it's just a... It's literally a plot of land. It's like a pasture. <laughs> but it's Garden of Eden, guys. Come yeah. on. Okay, this is another fun one. <laughs> I told this to McKay, and he was like, yeah. And I was like, I've literally never heard of this. This was other, you know, Journal of Mormon discourse, um, where it is believed that the North Pole contains thousands of millions of Israelites. Would you like to explain that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thankfully, I was never a person that believed this, but I understand that. I, I don't even know if I'm almost positive this isn't just a Mormon idea, um, but there are people and Mormons included who believed that the lost tribes of Israel were at the North Pole and there was a literal wall of ice separating them from the rest of the planet. Uh, so <laughs> that's fun. Cute. It's really cute. There, there was also a guy, a, I will say pseudoscientist that believed, who was Mormon, that believed that the earth was hollow and the entrance to the hollow earth was at the North Pole. I True was, story. So, there's a I lot. I got singled out by my physics teacher one time because he knew I was Mormon. Really? And he was talking about that and he was like, oh, McKay, he's, he was actually Mormon. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> this is Come embarrassing. On. There's a lot of, like, Mormon folklore around the 12 tribes of Israel, too. Like, I, I don't know who told me this, but I was taught by somebody that there was, like, a random cave hidden in the earth where the rest of the people were, and eventually that cave would be opened up, and then the rest of the tribes would, like, gather. There you were go. you taught that? That's basically the North Pole thing. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. that's just where I thought it would. Yeah, who knows? 
weird Mormon it's a, things. It's a combination <laughs> of the the ice wall and the hollow earth. Or the water core, if you're Rod uh, Meldrum. Rod Meldrum. This is also a Rod Meldrum slander channel. This is. This is. Um, here's another one. We get asked about um, planets a lot. We talked a bit about that last time, I think, where the church kind of originally said that you'll get your own planet when you die if you're worthy. And then they kind of snuck that out because people are like, oh, Mormons get their own planet. And it, they kind of get made fun of for it, as they should. <laughs> So here's, here's some backup to those things that the church wants to pretend isn't there anymore. This is from Prophet Brigham Young. Mankind are here because they are the offspring of parents who were first brought here from another planet, and power was given them to propagate their species, and they were commanded to multiply and replenish the earth. So Adam and Eve came from another planet where they were already existing? No. Elohim and his wife or wives came from another planet i have a quote remember about that too the uh, as man is god once was and as god is man may become but couldn't we apply that same logic to adam and eve too would they have potentially come from another planet no they're gonna get their own because they're spirit children michael remember this shit you can't make it up it's a, <laughs> it's a bad onion there are so many layers of just terrible it is so bad. It is so bad. Okay, let's hear the next one. So the next scripture that backs this up is, this is in Pearl of Great Price, and it says, Worlds without number I have created. So this is backed up in Mormon scripture, and that there's, you know, there's this idea within Mormonism that at least I was taught that we weren't the only planet of people existing, and that there were thousands upon millions of other planets that God had created who were potentially living out similar were very different lives than we were. And yeah. he was managing all those planets apparently at the same time. And that only the planet Earth could be evil enough to slay the Messiah. So that's why he was sent to this planet. So that does feel a little anti-Semitic, but... Uh, a lot of Mormon things do. Yeah. But to the point of Heavenly Mother, like you just talked about, so the church has always been kind of more kind of different in their stance on the idea of a heavenly mother. I know a lot of Christians like generally don't believe in a heavenly mother. So Mormonism is kind of unique in that Niche. sense. But I think it's also kind of culturally appropriated from some other religions and cultures. Um, so I, I caution people when talking about these things because I think Mormons kind of ripped this off in some other areas, which shocking, right? I mean, <laughs> we've been talking about it a while now surprising and so mormons especially recently have started to really heavily emphasize that you are um children of heavenly parents so not just of heavenly father but you are of heavenly parents a heavenly father heavenly mother it's even in the young women's chant that you repeat every sunday um they recently changed it that's a, another topic for another day. But they it's recently been instilled in that. But there's been lots of talk recently because lots of women, especially progressive Mormon women, are latching onto this idea of a heavenly mother, right? Like I did. And so they're latching onto this and they love this part of potential Mormon doctrine because it speaks to them, right? So as of late, since it's been getting much more attention, one of the church leaders came out and said, supposedly, it was leaked, but it's not corroborated at this point, but essentially said, stop talking about Heavenly Mother. It's leading people the wrong direction. It's sending people the wrong message. People are not allowed to pray to Heavenly Mother. It's not the same thing. Um, you're creating idols if you do pray to her, like yeah. this whole thing, right? I, I actually came across, I'll insert a clip right here of Apostle Dale G. Renlund in very veiled terms talking about what, corroborating what Jordan just said. If you look at the Gospel Topics essays about Mother in Heaven, if you read what's summarized there, you'll know everything I know about Mother in Heaven. I wish we knew more. And you may wish you knew more as well. Um, but reason cannot replace revelation and wanting to know more, asking questions. That's not, that's not a bad thing, but speculation can sometimes lead us to something that is a little bit off bubble or divert us from what has been revealed. And so, uh, the savior told his disciples, 
that they should always pray to the Father in my name. And so that's, we follow that pattern, that we pray to God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. It'd be wonderful to sit back and make up all kinds of comforting doctrine. Uh, but Latter-day Prophets are constrained to not do that. So from what I've heard, that is a training for stake presidents who are the leaders above bishops that lead each congregation um, and very tenderly and very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, gingerly putting it that you don't worship anybody who's not God the Father. Anybody else is not the same. So Heaven forbid women feel like they can step into power a little bit. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at you. You created all these souls for me to populate an earth with. You don't deserve worshiping. Thank you. I will take all of the credit. So We hide her away. The patriarchy and misogyny lives on in the Mormon church. So there's a lot of Currently. confusion about this, and especially this part that I apparently haven't heard about yet. But there's also some confusion as far as the heavenly parents goes because Mormons believe in eternal polygamy is if there is truly only one heavenly mother and what does that look like and what does that mean? And so the circles that I'm in, people tend to believe that there's a heavenly father and a heavenly mother and that's it. There's the two of them, they're the parents and that's it. But this came from a, um, a book called Women in Authority um, and it was by Sister Maxine Hanks, and I don't remember who she was. I think she was in the Relief Society or something. But she wrote in this book, we don't hear about Heavenly Mother because she is the only one of many wives of God. There's other quotes that are really similar. So Awesome. <laughs> God is a polygamist. There you go. So any Mormon women can't have nice things. Ever. They can't. They can't have nice things. Anytime they get one breadcrumb thrown to them, they grab onto it, and the church is like, "Oh God, take it back, take it back!" And then they've got to, you know, walk Starve back everything for they the said. Next two generations. Yeah. So that's exactly what happens. So all good fun, right? This is this. I love this. This I is hope great. This, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this was only a small fraction of the amount of things that I could have included. Prophets have talked about a lot of things and made a lot of terrible comments since Joseph Smith and his time. So I think we can make this a series. If there's anything in here that caught your eye, there were probably a bunch of things yeah. we could have done their own episode on based on things that we've talked about today, like For moon sure. inhabitants. Um, so if there's some things you want to see, drop them in the comments below. Definitely do that. Uh, in the meantime, you can whip out your telescope and see if you can spot any of those Quaker dressed people on the moon or better yet, you can go to, like I mentioned earlier, mist in Sunday school.com and you can see all kinds of wacky, weird and downright offensive things that Mormon leadership has said in the past nearly 200 years. They got it all on there. Nice graphics, excellent sources, and in-context citations. So check that out. It's awesome. If you made it this far, thank you. Thank you, thank you for sticking around with us. If you are watching on YouTube and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It helps us a lot. If you're listening on any of our other platforms for just audio only, make sure you save us every week. It helps us out a bunch. If you'd like to support us in another way, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Jordan and McKay. We do awesome, exclusive things for patrons, ad-free content, voting on topics for one video of the month. This month we voted and I haven't checked it, but I'm almost positive we're gonna be talking about Mormon LARPing or Pioneer Trek. So if excited. you would like to participate in things like that on a month to month basis, go and check us out, patreon.com slash Jordan McKay. If you have any questions or comments or feedback or anything like that, you can reach out to us on our Discord. The link is in the description of the YouTube video. Really easy to find. We love to interact with the people on the Discord. It's a really easy place to get in contact with us. Also follow us on social media. We have TikTok and Instagram. You can find us at Jordan and McKay. And check out our merch. Uh, we just 
approved the proofs for some badass merch from a viewer that we decided to link up with and they designed some stuff for us and I'm really excited for it. Um, there's gonna be sticker restocks at the Etsy store, so if you've been wondering about those things, don't worry, we're just gonna restock everything at the, the same time so everything is done. So check out our, our Etsy store for the stickers, Happy Brain Collective down in the description, or our Teespring for t-shirts and more. We also have another cool collaboration coming up with an item that is not really merch, that is different. Mm, we will be talking about that and I'm super excited. We've talked about these products before. So if you are a good listener, you might, you be able to might know together. what we're talking about. Thank you all for watching, for listening. We love you and we will see you next time.